let's talk ability score generation in 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. I've done a video on this in the past, and the channel has grown significantly, so I think we'll get a lot more variability in the answers. So that's why I wanted to talk to you all about it today. So there are a couple of standard rules on how you generate ability scores, and those are determined in the 5th edition player's handbook. Now, everybody I've talked to through one form or another has some unique quirk, tweak, alteration on how they do what they do. So if we look at it right here on D&D on &D Beyond, you can see determining your ability scores, and it'll give you a couple of different options. So the first one is uh, generate your six ability scores. Roll four six-sided dice and record the total of the highest three dice on a scratch piece of paper. Do this five more times so you have six numbers. Uh, that's the that's what it actually defines in the player's handbook, how you do it. Roll 4d6, drop the lowest number, do that six times, that's how you generate your ability scores. It says if you want to save time or don't like the idea of randomly determining ability scores, you can use the following scores instead. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, 8. We call this standard array. If you've ever heard that terminology, that's what that means. And then it says you assign them as you wish, and that's how it goes. Um, and then down here we can see there's a section for variant customizing ability scores. So it says at your DM's discretion, you can use this variant for determining ability scores. And this is what's also often referred to as point buy. You have 27 points to spend on ability scores. The cost of each score is shown below in this table. Each score starts at 8, and you can spend points in them to raise it. Uh, using this method, 15 is the highest possible ability score you can end up with before applying any racial increases. You can't have a score lower than 8, meaning you can't go lower than 8 if you happen to be playing a homebrew race or something that has a negative ability score. You can go below, but like you can't gain points back by setting a score lower than 8. This method of determining ability scores enables you to create a set of three high numbers and three low numbers, 15, 15, 15, 8, 8, 8 or a set of numbers that are above average and nearly equal, 13, 13, 13, 12, 12, 12, or any set of those numbers uh, between the extremes there. So that is the standard way you go about creating ability scores. 46 drop the lowest, use the standard array, or use the point by system. Those are pretty much the three most accepted ways, and a lot of things that's like organized play or things where they want you to be uh, they don't want to have stats be too swingy one way or another. They will pretty much lie on, rely on point by or standard array because then everybody's characters are created equal. And that's, again, how Adventure League does it because of that. But everybody plays the game differently. Everybody has different sets of rules. I want to know how you create your ability scores in your games, whether it be you, the DM, coming up with these rules whether it be you a player and your DM uses something funky that's not one of those three, I want to hear you tell me in the comments down below. I'll give you a couple examples of things that we've done over the years on this channel and, and in other games and homebrew things like that. So uh, one thing that I pretty much routinely do in my games is 4d6 drop the lowest, like we talked about, but I have my players roll seven times and we keep the highest six scores. So that's how that goes. 46 drop the lowest, just keep the highest three. Seven times, you keep the highest six of that seven. Um, we've done that. That's pretty much my standard rule that I've always done in every form of D&D. Even back in the three, five days, that's what I'd done. Um, and then there's also sometimes we had situations where we're like, if you roll less than eight, we'll set it at eight. So if you roll like a six, you'll set it at eight. There were times in the past where we'd done if you roll less than eight, we'll let you re-roll that whole set again and try to shoot for a higher number. Um, that's kind of varied around a little bit. Uh, sometimes we've been like you get to re-roll one one throughout that entire set of numbers. So you're rolling 46 drop the lowest seven times and somewhere in that list there's a one that you roll. You could re-roll that maybe get a better ability score. We've tried stuff like that, but I usually try to keep it pretty standard. 46 drop the lowest seven times is my standard go-to. Um, we've played in the past, uh, my buddy Jake, who's run a couple games, he allows you to do 46 drop the lowest six times, but in one of those numbers, you get to replace one of the D6s with a D8. That was something a little bit unique that we tried. 
Um, I've played with people who use like the old super powered stat rules, which would be 5d6, uh, keep the highest three, reroll ones and twos. And I actually kind of have grown to like that a little bit. And I'm sure I can hear a bunch of you already screaming at me in the chat about how that's crazy and that's ridiculous. But if I'm going to run a game, especially on the internet that I'm going to stream and people are going to watch, uh, it's got to be entertaining, right, one way or another. And yes, low, low ability scores can be entertaining. People love to tell me that. Um, but they don't have to be. You can have an optimized, well-designed character and it can still be fun roleplay-wise. And I've had plenty of people who have really low ability scores and they come up with really great ideas uh, in-game or out-of-game, like how to solve a puzzle. And do you really want to be like, well, your character's not that smart, so sorry, that doesn't count. And then, like, if they've already expressed their opinion, then it doesn't matter, like, because it's already out there. The answer's out there in the world, you know? Um, so I don't, I like to role play to role play when I do this in my games. I don't like to role play to a stat, if that makes sense. Like, I don't like to be like, well, my intelligence is super high, so I'm going to be super, you know, intellectual. Well, I might have a high intelligence, but maybe my guy, you know, is a jerk and he's like, he acts stupid. I role play a character that I want to play, the ability scores, which also, I'll be honest with you, sometimes comes to bite you in the ass when your character, and this has happened to me several times, my character has been thrust into a leadership role that they didn't want. I wanted to play this character as like a follower in the party, a member of the party, let somebody else be the face person. Um, and after nobody stepping up, my character stepped up and decided to become the face person because we were just sitting around and no one was answering the question. My character had an eight charisma, so I could give epic speeches and try to rally everybody, but my checks were always garbage. Um, but that doesn't mean that that character didn't think what they were doing was persuasive or deceptive or anything like that. I wasn't playing to my eight charisma. I was playing my character as my character felt right to play. The negative ability scores led for interesting role plays down the road, but you get the point. So... Let me know what other ways you've come up with generating ability scores. I've told you a couple different ones that we've done. I had my old, I had a DM in my old campaigns uh, back in 3.5. If you rolled three, uh, like triples, like if you rolled four, four, four on your dice, he lets you add the, uh, the fourth die in. So it was still like 46 dropped the lowest, but if you rolled triples, he let you add the fourth die in. That led to me having a 3.5 character with a starting ability score of 20 one which was pretty nutty to think about um so like that was something that we had done in the past um or like a dm had done in the past for me um i've heard people this is something i'm really really interested in i've heard of people coming up with modified arrays so like it's still a standard set of numbers that you use but it's not 15 14 13 12 10 8 it's like 16 15 14 13 12 10 or something like that I've also heard of people using a different point buy, like making it not a 27 point buy, making it a 29 point buy, and the highest the ability score can go to is 16. Um, that's a cool concept for me. And then I've heard of people coming up with the really bonkers ones where they're using like D4s and D8s minus six or whatever it is, you know, 2D8 minus four or something. I don't know. I've heard a lot of really, really uh, like wonky all over the place ability score generation methods and i want to know let me know in the comments down below what do you use in your games like what's your standard mine like i said is 46 drop the lowest seven times keep the highest six but what's your standard that you use or what's another funky one you've used in another game either that you've run or you've played and you really like and you'd like to see come back or one that you've read about on the internet that you'd also like to see. Because I'm always looking for fun ways to change the game up and alter things, so I want to hear what you guys have to say. And hopefully, between what I've said in this video and the comments on it, you'll maybe find something interesting you can use in a future game of your own. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you again to my patrons over on Patreon for continuing to support me and the channel. I still do have a couple of giveaways going on. My Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden giveaway still going on and with that you can win things like Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden dice the Icewind Dale Rhyme of the Frost Maiden limited edition cover and the that's not that the the Icewind Dale uh Rhyme of the Frost Maiden standard cover which I don't have in front of me here so uh anyway 
That's still going on till the 17th, which is five days from now, uh, or maybe four days from now by the time you're watching this. So you should go and check that out. Anyway, folks, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.